whenever you're ready, I'll let you take it away. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We are back. And today we're going to be talking about precipitation types. And that's pretty fitting because at the time of this recording, Minnesota is experiencing a mixed bag of precipitation. So we're going to be talking about all the different types of precipitation, um, especially during the wintertime anyway, that we can expect around here. Excellent. So when we talk about precipitation types, there are four main ones that we're going to fo focus on here. Uh, most of these involve colder weather and the differences we get between having a cold or below freezing layer of the atmosphere and an above freezing layer of the atmosphere and how those work. So we'll talk about each of these in order, but basically rain, snow, sleet or ice pellets, they're basically the same thing, and freezing rain. We'll talk about where those come from and how we can understand what makes them and the kind of damages they cause or potential damages they cause to people. Absolutely. And so one of the things that Alan said, um, or just to expand on something that you said, it's really important for this lecture to remember that what's going to determine what type of precipitation bonks you on the head is going to be that temperature profile underneath the cloud deck, right? It's going to um, influence how those you know, precipitation particles falling out of the base of the cloud, how they respond and how they change phase over time. So, yep. Right. So we'll start with the first one here, and we'll briefly just talk about rain. If you're getting rain, it's not a surprise, fully liquid. Everything is completely melted in a raindrop. But one of the questions we get a lot is, how big can a raindrop get? And this figure here you see on the side of the screen basically is saying that this traditional shape you see here for A, well, that's not really the shape you would expect. Um, it doesn't actually fall that way. So letter B shows that if the raindrop is really, really small, less than two millimeters, what you've got is a pretty spherical raindrop. But as the raindrop gets bigger, these darker blue arrows around it are showing what air will do as it's falling through the atmosphere. So the raindrop actually flattens out at the bottom when it, as it gets to C and then closer to D size till it takes more of a hamburger bun shape. But if the raindrop gets too big, bigger than about five millimeters or so, the drag that comes up here in the middle of the raindrop, that force of the air will actually cause the raindrop to split like you see here in E. So even though people talk about really huge raindrops, they never really get bigger than about four or five millimeters in practice. Yeah, and remember, the, the title of the song is Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, not Teardrop. So that's how I remember that they're not actually teardrop shape. <laughs> there you go. All right, you get the next All one. Right. You're the you're more right. snow fan than me. Oops. If I could work this, there we go. Yay. All right. So being here in Minnesota, we're pretty familiar with this next type, right? The uh, solid form of precipitation or, you know, one of the solid forms of precipitation, snow. So snow is what happens when the precipitation falling out of the base of the cloud falls into a temperature profile, which is below freezing all the way down from the base of the cloud down to the ground. And depending on the temperature, actually, the colder it is, the more different the, um, the appearances of the snowflakes can be. So as it says up there, I mean, yeah, they can take on lots of different shapes and lots of different sizes, but the key thing to remember here is that this is completely frozen precipitation all the way down. Right. And so rain, completely liquid, snow, completely solid for the vertical temperature profile. The next two get a little bit trickier when we have some combination of liquid or above freezing layer and below freezing layer. So we'll take a look at sleet here. Sleet is this weird thing where you have raindrops that are fully liquid and they refreeze. And so basically what's happening, we'll show this in another figure as well, but basically what's happening is very high up the precipitation is probably frozen. It's very cold, maybe we're in the cloud itself. As it falls down, it hits a warm layer, melts completely, but if there's a deep layer of cold air near the ground, this layer down here makes the precipitation have enough chance to refreeze, either partly or completely like you see here in this figure. So basically, sleet is frozen balls of ice. There's a question a out question. there. Michaela, what's your question? I was wondering how large can sleet get? 
ginormous. No, it can't actually get ginormous, right? So you're never going to see um, sleep the size of very large hailstones or anything like that. Because remember, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember what Alan just said, sleet forms when you have the, the uh, sorry, the frozen precipitation falling out of the cloud deck, melting down into, you know, a raindrop size and then refreezing. But if you recall from a couple slides ago, raindrops can't get that big before they become unstable and break apart, right? So our sleet pellets that we see are never going to approach the size of, you know, large hailstones uh, because of that. And also they form very, very differently, right? Hailstones are associated with updrafts and, you know, lots of random motion within a thunderstorm, which we'll talk about later, but um, so completely different formation uh, mechanisms and yeah as alan said perfect all yeah. right rachel you're, you're going Thanks. i'll let you do the freezing rain part too Ooh, awesome all right ah <laughs> sorry all right so the next type this is probably you know you know that you're not supposed to have your favorites right this is probably my least favorite type of <laughs> weather um especially if you're driving in it so Freezing rain is rain, it's precipitation that falls out of the base of the cloud into a warm layer, stays liquid for a long ways down, but at the surface, at the ground level, the temperatures are well below freezing. And because the temperatures are well below freezing at the surface, anything that that liquid hits freezes on contact. So it's an instantaneous sheet of ice. And the problem with precipitation like this, with freezing rain like this, is that when it sticks to a surface, it doesn't fall off immediately, right? And so it can accumulate and accumulate and accumulate these layers of uh, frozen rain on these surfaces and really weigh those surfaces down. Those surfaces are not only treacherous to drive on, right? So if this is a sheet of ice on the, on the highway, you don't want to be driving on this, but it can do things like break down power lines and break off branches of trees. And so it can be a very, very dangerous form of precipitation, especially if you're not prepared for it. Right. And the other place this becomes a real problem is for aviation. If you get too much freezing rain, or this even happens with a plane flying through a cloud, if you change the shape of the wing, you change the ability for lift. So freezing rain events are a big, big deal in the aviation industry. Sleet is Absolutely. dangerous, but it's almost like crunchy snow. There's a little bit of traction to it. Freezing rain is exceedingly dangerous. So this, and as you'll see in the next slide, when we talk about how the different formation methods work, it's not a big difference between getting a sleet layer or a freezing rain type profile. Yeah. All right, so here's what Go we've got. It. <laughs> um, well, I guess we can take them in the order we talked about them. So the rain idea here, I remembered how to do the laser pointer in this. So Ooh. way up high in the cloud, up higher in the atmosphere, it's very cold. So it starts probably as frozen precipitation, but as long as this red color, the above freezing layer is deep, the snowflake will melt and it will fall as rain. So it's gonna end up hitting the ground as rain. And again, as long as the precipitation falling out of the base of the cloud enters into cold uh, atmosphere below, it's gonna stay frozen. So that's when you get your snowfall. Right. And then as we talked about here a bunch, the difference between sleet and freezing rain, both of them have the precipitation falling and melting, but notice the big difference. Sleet here has a deeper layer, as I get closer here, a deeper layer of cold air, which means the precipitation can refreeze into a ball of ice. But in this other case with freezing rain, it's still liquid. And so if what's down here at the surface is below freezing, it freezes on contact. That's what makes things so difficult. You get these sheets of ice or very smooth ice for a freezing rain event. And so that creates some of the worst storms. Yeah. All right. Any other questions you have at this point? If not, let's see well, how I have a well question. you understand I... this. Okay, go for let's... it. Yeah, my question is, how, how much have they been paying attention? How can oh, we find gosh. out how they've been paying attention? <laughs> well, one of the other cool things we can do here with the Space VR world is actually quiz you. So we've hey, already sent a link to most of your devices. Me. Right. <laughs> so you should be able to respond to this poll here. 
So the question, just in case you can't see it, is if the entire air column is below freezing, right? The most likely precipitation that you're going to get that's going to bonk you on the nose or, you know, <laughs> that's going to pile up in your driveway, uh, driveway is what? You got a choice from freezing rain, rain, sleet and ice pellets, or snow. So go ahead right. and lock in your answers. All right, we've got a few of them. Let's see how everybody did here. I will lock the result. And hey, you're making a tornado with your hands. hands. <laughs> I am making a tornado with my hands. I have to use my phone for controlling the app right now. So everybody yeah. thinks the answer is snow. Good job, and you it guys. Turns out that is correct. All right, <laughs> let's try the next question. This All one's right. a little bit trickier. I got All right. So with this one, you've got an air column that has a melting layer aloft and a deep layer of below freezing air just and at the surface. So just above and at the surface. So what is that a recipe for? What kind of precipitation are you going to get from that? You've got melting layer aloft and then a deep layer of below freezing at and just above the surface. What's that a recipe for? Right. Lock in you your answers and we'll your answers now. All right, Rachel, I think most of the people are going to get this one too. I think you taught this well. I think they are a bunch of bright students, so I think you're right. All right. <laughs> well, let's see here. We've got a bunch of people in. Let's lock this <clears throat> and look at what people said. All right. Oh, well, okay. A little bit of disagreement, this is good, but let's check the right answer and then we'll talk about why. All right, so it's sleet and ice pellet. So remember, so, with freezing rain, <laughs> sorry, I'm hearing an echo. Let me turn down my mic a little bit. Um, so with freezing rain, <laughs> you're going to have a deeper ear, uh, layer of warm air and a deeper layer of cold air. Whereas with the sleet and ice pellets, going back to the, um, uh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm gonna try this again. So with the freezing rain, you've got a deep layer of the warm air and a kind of a smallish layer of colder air near the surface, right? That's why it stays liquid on the way down and then freezes on contact. With sleet, you have more equal in terms of the depth of the warm layer and the cold layer down below. Right. So when you're thinking about the difference, what we really care about is how deep this cold layer is above the surface. That's the big determining factor between the two. All right. Yay. That's what we have for you. Thanks, everybody, for coming today, and we'll talk with you next Yay. time. Clap, clap, clap. Yay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, there we go. Thank you, everybody. What'd you think?